He said, the more I think about this, the less uh, happy I am about changing one of these gears. Since I had to put the pinion back in, and since this thing has been worn in special to that worn out piece of crap, I think I'm going to give this a buff. Do what I can with some a little bit of emery cloth to bash the rust off of this thing. And I'm going to put it back in rather than, it's not even to take a chance, rather than ruining my gear set that I know is still good from my 97. So, this is going to be boring. I'm just going to take some emery cloth and maybe a stick or a screwdriver or something flat and just scuff up these teeth and just get the uh, get the heavy heavy corrosion off of it and then we're going to take it out and give it a clean because it is pretty gross and then we're going to uh, get her back into the into the unit alright so she's all cleaned up as good as possible I got her sitting in I got to attempt to get the shims in. It should be entertaining. There's one. these came out like that so there it is ah. not bad it feels pretty good Let's get some schmoo on here. Not really a fan of running bearings dry if I don't have to. Yep, just a little bit of backlash. Not too bad. Okay. Now we're gonna clean up the caps. Get them put back on. Get the bolt started just a little bit. Still good. I actually did mark these so I knew what side and what orientation they came on. They were on. Not bad. All right, now I'm gonna go figure out the torque spec for these, which I expect to be somewhere between uh, probably 80 and 125, but we'll be back. The torque spec's a little lower than I expected. I see anywhere from 70 to 77 foot-pounds noted. So we're gonna split the difference-ish and go to 75. 
in a couple of steps, I guess. She goes. A little bit of lash, but not bad. This thing's probably going to be noisier than hell, but that's all right. That'll work. I guess we are about ready to start putting the axles back in it. We can get the pin up to where I can get to it. Okay, so now that we've made that less of a screw up, <laughs> get the C clips, clean those off, goo on the gear. Hey, it actually worked that time. The, bear, the, the gears didn't move, so I can actually get this thing in without having to pry on anything. Okay. That's good. Tap, tap, tap. I don't like the fact that this thing has to go in with a hammer. The other one slides in nice and smooth. That looks okay. Yeah. All right, now, let's see what direction we need to go here. Feel too bad. Of course, that doesn't mean much. But now I can start reassembling the brakes. All right, so I have a problem down in here. <clears throat> now, if you can see this axle shaft. We've got a little bit of movement. That one has a whole bunch of movement and it's not supposed to. It's supposed to be all the way out like that. But the problem is, I'm thinking that the uh, clutch pack on that side or the springs is damaged, worn out, broken, whatever and it's not putting enough pressure on that spider gear to push out and properly hold everything. Which is why I was 
getting some looseness in here that I didn't see in my other one. So that sucks. So, the only thing I can think that I'm going to have to do is either transfer all the clutches from that one to this one or figure out how I need to shim this one to make it work. And my first option is to reshim it and put this one in because I really don't want to rebuild another center section as that was even less fun than this. So, crap. I knew there was something amiss and it didn't, didn't, I didn't catch it when I took it apart. But uh, yeah, that's not supposed to be quite that sloppy in there. So I'm going to pull this back apart, get this thing out of here, sort my shims, and then see if I can determine exactly which shim I'm going to need for that other one. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay. I think this could work now. This is the center section out of my rear end, and it is in here. It's not a backlash. Turns nice and free. The shims, I have them the same as they were on that rear end. And they went in pretty good. I had to just barely tap this one in. And I know they're not supposed to be loose. But what I did is I measured both housings from this surface to this surface, basically where those shims sit. And they were within two thousandths of each other. And then I measured the total th shim stack. And it was within one thousandth of each other. So the total thickness of both of the shims, of all of the shims on each rear end, was effectively identical within my margin of error. And so was this distance, which tells me the difference in the rear end shims is the ring gear. So making sure this ring gear is set up properly to that because there is no center distance on the pinion that has to be the same. So making sure that's set up properly or it should be the same. <laughs> another, another reason maybe this has to be set up the way it is. But we've got this together with the shims out of that one so the rear end is where it just a little bit of backlash so it ain't tight and no place I decide I think we're gonna be in good shape I don't have the bearing caps on yet that's coming next but I'm gonna be using the bearing caps from this one because I know they're at least fit to this housing and once I get that in then we're gonna try to reassemble it with the axles and see what we have all right, don't try this at home, kiddies. <laughs> we have the center section out of the 97 in here with the shims out of the 97, the bearing caps out of the 03, the axles out of the 03, and it's tight. Not tight as in no clearance, but I don't have that clunky silliness going on with the rear end anymore the axles just a bare amount of backlash and she turns very nicely I am much happier with that now I know you're not supposed to mix and match gears, but because of the bearing issue, I couldn't transfer my old gear over to this one. So, it is what it is. But, uh, who knew? We will now start putting, I guess, the brakes back together. 
I'm gonna do a little cleaning first with some brake clean and get all of the goo and crap off of the shoes, especially on this side where the oil seal was leaking. I'm gonna get that all cleaned up, scuff it a little bit. And we're gonna pull this apart down here and get that actuator taken care of, which I guess I should have done before I put the axle back in. It would have been easier, but oh well. Uh, not that big a deal. And we're going to do both sides, get these back on it, get the calipers back on it, and that's where we're going to go.